So I'm going to talk about uh, the Bach Nature Grant where we have done some trials under uh, authority trials under organic management. And uh, so how many of you are growing oats? Uh, okay. And so if you see, uh, if you have comments, you can um, uh, stop me during the talk. Uh, I'm also interested in getting your input and what you're thinking. So this grant, uh, was the idea was initiated uh, with a talk between Jesse Hall, he's a farmer in South Dakota, um, in Arlington, South Dakota, and Jim Fenegan in RCS. In RCS. Um, so he, the, he was transitioning to organic and he wanted to uh, uh, test what variety would, of oat he was interested in putting oat and what variety of oat should he put there. And so then I reach out to uh, my uh, to breeder in Minnesota and in Wisconsin, and they had uh, the same, they reach out to farmers of there that would be interested. And so we had trials on uh, common fence hole in Madison, Minnesota, and in Wisconsin on Mark Dollar's farm. Both have been an organic farmer. And so Kevin Smith was the person in Minnesota that is a barley and oat breeder. And in Wisconsin, Lucia Gutcher is, is also a small grain breeder over there. So for, I will uh, give you first an introduction of why, uh, why it's important to look at the variety and have knowledge of uh, how the variety is going to perform. And then uh, I will give the result from the segment and I will also introduce another grant, another work that we are doing uh, that is funded by General Mills. So for a sustainable farming system, uh, you, need to, you need to be respectful of the environment and of people's health. And it needs to enable to, for the farmer to make a living. And so I think oat is a good fit in a, far, a sustainable farming system in uh, bringing diversity in the crop and uh, for soil health. Oat fits well as a nurse crop for alfalfa. Uh, it's uh, good for the, with mycorrhizae for the soil health. And um, it also requires less input compared to other uh, cereal crop. And as a food, uh, oat is, uh, has health benefits. So it also uh, fits well. But to make, for the farmer to be able to make a living, that means the crop needs to have a return. And the choice of variety that is planted can make a big difference in terms of productivity and also if you're able to market your grain. So plant breeding has a role to play to develop variety that are adapted to the production system. Uh, and we are increasing, um, increasing productivity, disease resistance, lodging, and uh, induced quality. And to show you the difference, the impact that it can have on the future, here is an example that's from the conventional system uh, that we run um, at South Dakota State University. There is a CPT, and every year they do trial variety trial, at the, um, and we, that's a result for the eastern part, but we see similar uh, result on the central and western part, that's just to give an example. If we, for example, Jerry, over three years of uh, all the location from the eastern part of the state. Sorry. Can you hear her now? Okay. So that's an example um, from the trial, and if we see the overall Yield average for Jerry and compared to Dion, we have a difference of almost 43 bushel per acre. And uh, that's over several locations and um, three years. So that can make quite a bit of difference just what variety you're choosing on the region. And if we take it as an organic price, it makes even more uh, different, can have a bigger impact. Uh, there is a demand for organic oat. This is for uh, grain, organic grains, so not only oat, but uh, and it shows that there is more value for imported grain versus uh, domestic. 
far out, even conventional, a lot of it is imported from Canada, but there is a deep uh, market there for organic food. But to be able to meet that market, variety is also important because you need to meet the specification of the market. And um, from one variety to another, it might make it that you can sell your grain or not be able to sell it and market it. Disease resistance is also really important. Here, uh, the, or the major issue with oat is corn rust. Uh, how many days do you think there is? This is a susceptible variety. <coughs> and uh, that uh, was take a picture, both pictures were taken in uh, beer South of Dakota in 2019. How many days do you think there is between those two pictures? It's so eight days. Uh, so that's horsepower. It's very susceptible to crown rust. And uh, the crown rust will uh, make that you have barely any uh, grain harvested. The test weight will be really low and it will break the straw. So it can really uh, damage the crop. And in South Dakota, or not just South, in the area, in the region, uh, we have the bat farm that is uh, present as the alternate host and because of the presence of the alternate host the crown rust can do its full cycle and there is new races that can uh, overcome the resistant gene so often variety that have been released that are resistant they become susceptible uh, for example horsepower that we just seen was resistant when it was released and then it became susceptible. So uh, also looking at newer variety release is important to uh, have uh, corn rust resistance as well. Uh, there is other disease, smut, barley yellow dwarf, oh, yeah. Uh, and so then we, uh, we, at start of this point, we did a survey of organic farmer and asked, it's a small survey, there was a few participants and we uh, asked what were the important traits when they select variety. And so yield, less weight, and use quality were uh, among the most important. We also asked what variety uh, the farmers were uh, growing on their organic farm. And uh, some of them, um, of the reply, were actually variety that are, that we know are very susceptible to crown rust. Uh, so in the, when we, um, uh, there is a lack of information on <coughs> what is recommended for um, or, on organic management. Steve Zwinger here uh, does an organic uh, trial <coughs> at NVSU. Uh, perhaps you've been doing that for a long time. But uh, on other area of the region, there is not a lot of information. Uh, so the objective was to identify profitable food variety for organic production. Uh, so we assembled a set of 20 hot variety uh, seven, uh, from seven different breeding programs. We asked producer, oat breed, like the three oat breeders that were participating to that and then milling industry into which variety we should be uh, testing. And uh, we tested two uh, OT8006 was actually released as cancer and uh, Oravina, those are uh, released that from, come from Canada. We included them because they were developed specifically under organic uh, management from the beginning of the breeding process. So we wanted to see if those would uh, fit better uh, while the other ones that were developed for conventional management. Uh, so the, we had trials at those three farms in two years and then uh, because the first year one of the trials we were not able to harvest, uh, we decided that at each state we would also have uh, one um, on the experimental station uh, to, have, to make sure we have enough data at the end. Uh, so each one were managed a little bit differently in terms of previous crop if they had under seeding, uh, the seeding rate. 
And so I will present just the, um, I won't go in detail at each location, I will, I will present an overview to make sure I'm keeping in time. So uh, for yield, uh, in this concern location and Minnesota, it was very similar ranking and overall beta gene, DM and saddle came higher for uh, yield. At the South Dakota location, we had no corn rust at all. It was a dry year, so the ranking was a little bit different. And over there, Aden, Newburgh, um, and Leggett did uh, well. Uh, for test weight, it was consistent uh, across location and environment with Antigo and Sumo that did uh, best with highest test weight. And then we had uh, Saddle, Leggett, Aiden, Natty, Shelby, and Dion. So those are sorted, the yield also was sorted by, uh, by yield, overall average yield. We also tested for quality to make to look how they are meeting quality requirements for the milling industry. So here, uh, the plum meat scene is important. Uh, the scene is a waste for the milling industry. So the one that you see, I put a red cross. Those are uh, the ones that would not meet, uh, that would have deduction on the pricing. But often after 12% scene, you get a discount. And higher than 20%, they can reject and don't want uh, to buy it. So Antigo has very high seed, very small seed. So that's something to be aware of. Betagene was uh, as a high percent plant, so a very big seed, that's desirable. Dion is acceptable, the so scene was under 12%. Um, then for saddle, same thing, it's desirable under 12%, and sumo, um, high plant and low scene, so desirable as well. Is that uh, then we also look at the uh, thousand kernel weight. Oravina uh, has very high thousand kernel weight. And another thing that we looked at is the growth percent. That's important for the milling industry. There will not be a discount based on that, but it might affect if they are interested in that variety or not. Um, so what they are selling, the product they are selling is a growth. The so hull is a waste. So the higher production of growth is a uh, more important for them on the return that they will have at the mill. Um, here, beta gene has high growth percent, rains, saddle, shelby, and sumo. Uh, Dion is also desert, is uh, okay, is, uh, six, so was good. Uh, however, one of the line from Canada is very low. Um, so the two uh, variety from Canada that did not do as well are also very late and uh, likely too late for uh, South Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. Uh, so, and then as far as milling quality, uh, what was uh, nutritional quality is also important. And uh, you know protein, but also beta glucan. Beta glucan is a fiber in oat that is unique and that uh, provides a health benefit when you see on the box of Cheerios heart healthy. This is because of the beta-glucan. So the higher the beta-glucan, the better nutritional um, property that the oat will have. So as far as protein, Antico has high protein content, and then uh, for beta-glucan, beta-gene has the highest protein content. Uh, beta-glucan beta content, sorry. Uh, beta-glucan means uh, the milling industry doesn't want to see anything on the form, and the higher the better. Uh, so natty would not meet, uh, would not be desirable for them. It has too low beta-glucan. So now uh, to just on the agronomic characteristic of the main that we've seen uh, towards the top on productivity. Um, and, uh, Antigo is hardy with um, a logic score from 1 to 96 and uh, good crime rust resistance. The crime rust here are ratings that were taken at the fence consent site. Beta gene is mid to late. 
and uh, acceptable lodging free and crime rust resistance. Dion, um, it's a later maturing variety. Um, the lodging is okay and the crime rust is uh, good. And uh, we talked also about Sadol. Sadol has, uh, is early maturing variety. Um, with uh, good lodging, very good lodging, very resistance and fungus resistance and sumo um, is very hardy and uh, um, with acceptable lodging and good fungus. Uh, so to summarize that fair uh, result, the top performer was Dion, Sadol, Betagene, Antigo and Sumo with Betagene. Be careful for the test weight to make sure you're because you might have difficulty depending on where your area is to match uh, the test weight requirement. Uh, you need often 36 and you get discount on the 38. So it might be um, tricky to meet the test weight requirement. Antigo, uh, watch out for the sins. Um, and Sumo is, was a little bit less yield and Dion and Sadol, but it has excellent test weight, test weight, so if the issue is test weight, it might be something that you want to consider. Uh, this study was on, based on the limited number of environment. Ideally, for good uh, recommendation, we want to test over environment for several years, and uh, the more environment, the better the data. So, we are continuing this work with a new grant that is from Generals Foundation. And uh, so those are the people involved are at SDSU are listed here. It involves not only oats this time, it includes spring wheat and winter wheat. And it's not only organic, but also regenerative and convention also with expanding the capability of our breeding program and we are interested in developing a variety that small grain variety that fits those different production systems. So I'm going to just talk about uh, the organic trials that we did as part of that larger grant. Uh, this year we had uh, at the Beresford Farm, the South East uh, Research Station site, we have an oat and spring wheat uh, trial over there this summer, and right now there is a uh, winter wheat that is uh, in the ground. So far for oat uh, result, uh, we are testing more uh, variety and some breeding lines, because the idea is to also be able to select uh, variety that are breeding lines that are better adapted. <coughs> um, so all the little asterisks is things that are not tested before. There was also new release. A Minnesota Pearl was just released and so we were able to include that one. Rushmark is a new release from SDSU and Warrior is a new release from SDSU. And so at that site, um, Sumo, Saddle and Dion were uh, towards the top and then we also had Reigns, uh, Leggett and then Betagene and Antigo. So, Overall, uh, the, the ones that we seen towards the top in the same and are also here towards the top. And we can see that there is some breeding lines that are also promising uh, in terms of yield. And uh, the one I liked it was the test weight um, in uh, as the top performer of test weight. We still have Antigo with a very high test weight and Sumo. Um, so, and then the crown rust, we had heavy crown rust over there, as you seen on the picture earlier. And so the best for crown rust resistance, the lower uh, severity were sumo, saddle, um, and uh, legate. On Dion, we are so more pastel that we usually see. So we need to keep an eye to see if it's a change of races and that, uh, that might overcome the resistance in the arm, or if it was just a year of years, very high pressure. And then we did also an on farm organic trial at uh, Charlie Johnson Farm in Madison, South Dakota. And at that site, we also had a variety trial, a little bit smaller, 
in size with alpha founder seeding. And we did also a seeding rate uh, trial. We, well, we had three old variety and we um, tested for different seeding rate because some, because the, um, the thousand kernel weight changed quite a bit from variety to variety. The, uh, the plant architecture also changed from variety to variety, so we wanted to see uh, if there was a desirable seeding rate based on the, um, um, the variety. And so for that, uh, we were also hoping to see the effect on the alfalfa for the next uh, year. We, the problem this year, we, were, we planted uh, very, very late. We had very wet condition. So we could not, as we were planting, we had to stop our tractor hours. Uh, so, we, the seeding red trial was partly planted, uh, so all data, uh, because we have so many seed missing data, doesn't show any effect of the seeding rate, but uh, we'll try again uh, next year. And so, just um, for, I think that although we don't have as much data on organic, uh, the, I would encourage you to still take a look at the conventional. Uh, trials. There is some every year done in uh, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, South Dakota, and Iowa with a practical farmer of Iowa. And those still provide good data and uh, knowledge about the variety of our test weight, lodging, plant disease resistance, this is consistent, depend, no matter the um, uh, production system. Also for quality, uh, it's pretty consistent. Um, and then, if you're interested in knowing more about the organic product, food production, there is the extension of uh, the University of Minnesota that has put something online that is uh, informative. And uh, then, last recommendation, I would recommend to use certified seed if you, unless you are sure that what your replant is from a clean area and that or you have the uh, ability to clean it good, uh, it will help with uh, not bringing seed borne disease. It will help knowing exactly what variety you are planting and not be surprised what the characteristic. And then it will limit the weed amount that you're bringing back and uh, with making sure you have a good termination. What uh, diseases are seed borne? You have smut is seed borne. And then um, I'd like to thank the General Foundation, the SAIR, and then the farmers that are participating with us. And Charlie is uh, over here. <laughs> and uh, so um, thank you. Um, and then if you are interested in um, if there is something you'd like to know, like a trial to set up in your farm, uh, please let me know because we're interested, whether it's uh, oat or spring wheat or winter wheat, we're interested uh, to do on farm trials and uh, working with you, knowing what are your challenges. And uh, so, thank you. Uh, Canadian varieties. What what is the premise, or what are the factors that you make uh, when you make the statement that they're too late? Is it because you get more rust, or what's the? It's uh, the it's time that it matures, and that uh, we are harvesting. It's very late, and uh, the yield. I think it doesn't have uh, the time. Also, we can have some time heat wave, like higher heat, and the the very uh, late might not be it, like the it can come at a time that is uh, going to affect the yield on the very late maturing. Uh, so it has effect on test weight then too, probably. Yes, yeah. So it's just too warm when it's finished. So yes, and uh, so that's, and yeah. And so one of them, the cancer, is uh, extremely, extremely late. Oh, I well, it was late. I had been traveling and the last one we had. And one another thing is, uh, I think depending on the season, you you will have. Some
sometimes earlier maturing that will perform better, and sometimes you will see the late maturing better. Mm. So if you have enough area that you can plant two variety, it might be a good idea to have part of it being a later and part of it being an earlier maturing variety too. <coughs> Do you, do you know what the driver is in terms of why the why the earlier varieties maybe do better in the next year? It's usually the because varieties? of the weather pattern when it stresses the plant at the time that is critical, and depending on the maturity, will hit at that critical stage. So if you have two different maturity and you have, it might not affect both because they're not going to be at that same stage. 